Hey, it's Frank here with 4D Honeybee on a gorgeous middle June day. I think it's the 11th today. And we're looking at about uh, 24 degrees Celsius, which is going to be about mid 80s, about 81, 82. And uh, main goal for this inspection is to go deep into these hives today. It's been three weeks since I've inspected these hives. And what I did three weeks ago is I put a, uh, a first honey super on hive number one there, which hopefully is filled up with honey. Uh, on hive number two, I put a second brood box in and I fed it. So that feed will be gone for sure. So I'll see if they're in that second brood box. They should be. And uh, honey super on this one. Now this... This hive number three had a lot, of, a lot of bees in it. Didn't make me any honey last year, but they should be really strong this year. So for the purpose of this video, we'll just go through that inspection of hive number one there. As you can see, there's a lot of bees there. They're doing their bearding there because it's a hot day. And uh, that's a hive that I'm probably gonna need to split, I think, because it's gonna, it's doing gangbusters and I don't want it to, uh, don't want it to swarm off on me. So I'm gonna make sure I have a good look for swarm cells today and see if that queen is planning on moving. I do have a swarm box right here which is unoccupied, but uh, I don't want to rely on that swarm box to catch it. It's just more or less a last resort. So we'll see how this plan goes. And thanks for joining me with 4D Honeybee. So you can see the bearding on this hive, right? It's a pretty hot day. They're just starting to get the front of the hive into a little bit of shade there, but we'll see how she goes. So again, what I'm expecting to find here, what I'm hoping to find is that in this top super that, uh, They've built out the frames, and they could have actually, since it's been three weeks since I uh, put on that honey super, it could be that they've capped off some honey. So that's the absolute best case scenario. We're we'll hopeful for that, and we'll see what we get. Then we'll do a more thorough inspection of the hive, and hopefully see if, uh, if there's any swarming activity happening there. So we'll see. throw on a pair of gloves too because there's a there's two reasons one this is going to be probably my longest inspection of the year and uh just need to get my confidence back plain and simple um since it's still early in the season and uh this is the first year that i've overwintered bees i'm not really used to having this many bees at this time of year so they're not used to me yet and frankly i've lost a bit of my touch as well so hopefully we'll get that back now and not be so worried about the bee activity and be focused on the beekeeping activity. So let's see what we got under here. I think there's going to be a lot of bees. And there you go. Decent amount of bees under the box. I'm looking at the lid here to try to see a queen. Never have seen her on the lid, but there's no reason why she couldn't be up here. Frankly, I'm not that great at spotting the queen anyway, so... It's something I need work on, and I know it, and uh, today might be a good opportunity to try that because uh, I'm going to try to go through the deep brood boxes in order to see what kind of, uh, what kind of activity they've got going underneath. So let's see. I'm going to get this lid up and see what they're doing. Now I did, uh, the thing about this hive that's interesting as well is that I did put a, uh, uh, a queen excluder uh, underneath this, uh, underneath this honey super. And I've had mixed results with it. One year, they didn't seem to come up into the honey super for the first couple of weeks that I had the excluder on. So I removed it and then things were just fine. Um, this year though, again, I'm starting off with the excluder just because it makes life easier if I know the queen isn't coming up. Last year when I removed the excluder, she did come up and she did lay some brood up in the uh, honey super. So we don't want that to happen if at all possible. So here we go. And again, I get a lot of, uh, a lot of comments saying that there's too much space in between my inner lid and the frames. And that's why we're getting all this burr comb built. And I, I tend to agree with it. I just don't really know what I can do about it other than switching lids, and I really don't want to do that, so... We'll keep dealing with that burr comb. It's not that big a deal. But anyway, we'll put this lid close to the front of the hive. Sorry for shaking you there. And now let's see, I've gone with nine frames up here, and they're mostly drawn out, so I'd be pretty surprised if uh, these bees hadn't 
done a decent amount of uh, of uh, honey making at this point because this hive was pretty far advanced. So let's see what we got here. One thing that I noticed when I look back at old videos of me when I did wear gloves before, I noticed I was not very careful when I'm wearing the gloves. Like I, I actually felt like I was a bear pawing at the frames instead of you know gently picking them up. And it's just a byproduct of wanting to be careful not to squish bees with your bare fingers. And you don't think of it that much when you're wearing gloves. So that's something I'm gonna really try to be conscious of today. Just a little more care with not rolling the bees, etc. Wow, this is an outside frame. And it is jam-packed with nectar. Look at that, just full to the brim. And it looks like they're gonna wanna start to be capping it off on the inside there. So that's great. That may mean that some of the frames closer to the inside are being capped or are capped already. Can't really see it from the top. One thing I can see though is that my reasoning for having nine frames instead of 10 is working out. I want them to build the frames out way beyond the wooden, the wooden side of the frame. And the reason for that is it just means that I can extract fewer frames and come out with more honey. Look at the size of this spider. Goodness gracious. Oh, what beautiful green eyes it had. Did you see that? Look at this guy. Wow, that is one big old spider. Hopefully he's not taking too many of my queens. Wow, when he turns up into, into the light, he's got the greenest eyes. It's really neat. Can you see them? Wow, okay, enough about spiders. Let's get back to bees. Again, I'm not gonna try and spend too much time on this honey super. I just wanna know that they are making honey. Okay, so, and by the look of that first frame, they're definitely up here and they're definitely producing, so. I think what I've gotta do now, since the outside frames are already full, it's gonna mean that all the frames are full. Here's another frame just jam-packed with nectar. Heavy, heavy, heavy. I wanna remove it around too much because I don't want to uh, spill the nectar. Okay, I'm just going to get to the middle frames here and see if I can find if they're capping any of the uh, honey yet. But what I've done is I've prepared to uh, put a second honey super on this box and it's definitely ready for it. All of these frames are doing really well with honey. See if uh, any one of the middle ones are capped because that's usually where they start off. That's interesting here. Here's an example where they're building one frame out much wider than the next one. So you see this one's hardly got any build up because they've built up the frames on either side. So. Maybe the theory isn't so solid after all. Here, I'll give you another look here. They barely built this one out. And you know what? Actually, this was a brand new frame that I put in there with no, no comb drawn out. And that's probably why. They probably went to the next frames over, which were drawn out, and just started to work those. So that's perfectly fine. I don't think it'll make a huge difference. If you look at this next frame, which I'm going to pull out, it is massive. It's massive on both sides of the frame. And it's probably going to weigh about 10 pounds. My goodness, I can barely even lift it out. Yeah, look at that. Look at how wide, how much wider the comb is built out from the hive, from the actual frame of the, the actual frame itself. 
it's kind of got a funky pattern. All right, so that's good. They could definitely use a second box up here. None of this is capped yet, which is perfectly fine. It doesn't really matter. It's full, so they're, they're doing it. Just want to get some smoke going because they're starting to come up a little bit. Not too bad, though. And then uh, I'll put these uh, frames back and just start getting into the brood boxes below and see how they're doing. And again, right now I'm just trying not to squish any bees and not to take for granted where I put my fingers. That's something that I can always get better at and probably most beginner beekeepers will have issues with is just trying not to squish bees, right? A lot down here on the side, so I'm just going to smoke them a bit. Maybe they'll go down a bit, give me a little room to operate for this next frame, the last frame that I'm putting in. That was not a very eloquent approach. Okay. So that's it, we're just gonna put you on pause for a second while I get at the, uh, the lower brood box here. Okay, so I'm about to lift this, uh, this super off. This is something I don't have much experience with. You can see that the, uh, maybe you can't see it, but the queen excluder is sitting right here. I'm not sure if the queen excluder is gonna to wanna to come with the honey super, so the upper box, or whether it's gonna stay on the lower. I'm gonna try and make it stay on the lower. So we'll see how the prying goes. It may just come up with this box, which I'm not going to resist much. No, it's stable. Let's go. Are you free there, guy? Did I squish you? I squished you. All right. So we'll see if we can get this box off and over. Out of the way. Whoa, it's heavy. Okay, so we'll remove this uh, queen excluder here. Let's make sure you got a good angle on it. it seems to be pretty all right. Get rid of this excluder. It's a plastic excluder, which is supposed to be easier on their wings, I guess, as they climb through. Some people don't like using excluders for that reason, but again, I decided to try it and see how it goes, and so far it's working just fine. So main purpose of this inspection now is to, uh, just see if they're planting any swarms, right? To see, there's a lot of bees in this hive, right? So uh, I really should be splitting this hive and I may do that, but I'm not ready to do it for the next week or so. So if I do, it will be in the next week or two. And if I see swarm cells here now, it may help direct me on when and how I do it, what kind of a split I've done. I've never done a split, so it's all very new to me. So uh, that's why I'm kind of uh, waiting to see what, what indications the bees give me, if any. Very heavy frame here too, just waiting for the bees to give me some room to work. Thank you. Fellas, ladies, there's right. a frame full of capped honey. Just beautiful. Looking for the queen on this. I wouldn't expect to see her on here, but you never know. Now, I won't pull any more frames out of the hive, but I do want a good look, particularly at the brood frames, which should be in the middle. And when I say I won't pull them out, I mean I won't leave them out. 
Second frame is completely full of honey. Third frame is one I want to have a little bit of a look at here. Okay, this is a brood frame that's hatched out very recently. It still has some unhatched brood and some honey and some drone comb at the bottom. Let's see what we got on this side. Yeah, on this side as well, it's a hatched out comb. You can see the ones down here right at the bottom there. They're just about to hatch out. So. They haven't hatched out yet, but they are about to. Let's see if I can see a queen or. Well, they got a lot of. Uh, a lot of actual. Uh, well, this looks like a honey frame, actually. Yeah, they're capping this frame with honey. There is drone co on, on the side closest to me, there's drone co, but on the outside, it's all honey. Alright, just gonna do some more smoke. See, there's a lot of bees here. Okay, I'm just going to pause the video so that I won't, don't waste too much of your time. I'll turn it back on if I see something interesting, okay? Okay, now we're getting into some frames that have some brood on them. So if we're going to see any swarm activity, it's pretty likely to be on the next, I'd say, three frames or so. So let's see what happens here. Again, there's just so many bees, I'm just trying to be careful, A, not to squish them, and B, not to get stung when I squish them. One. One. Okay, what have we got here? Oh yeah, lots of brood. Look at this brood frame. A lot of bees on there. Can you see that all right? There you go. Solid brood on both sides. Now this side is more nectar. And again, looking for the queen on both of these. And for the queen, obviously, we kind of know what a queen looks like, but more than the actual look of the queen, I'm looking for the look of her movement. You know? So here I see some nice drone comb. There's a couple little queen caps with nothing in them, so I'm not too worried about them. I don't see any queen cells. I don't see the queen. So back in she goes. Okay, a couple more frames here. I'm gonna top off this smoke. blowing this smoke on the bees, but I'm hoping to get a thicker, whiter smoke than what's presently happening. That's looking better. I used to say that I've got an unlimited pile of wood chips, but then the property owner moved them around, so I actually have to really go scrounging to get some fuel for this, uh, for this smoker today. And by the way, I forgot my lighter. So I had to actually stop and leave, go to a corner store and buy a lighter. And that's no fun. Come on, bees, get out the way. Get out the way. 
You, get out the way. Thank you. You, get out the way. It's amazing sometimes the bees just sit there with their heads at the top of the frames and just look at you. And you can tell they're just checking out. Wow, incredible brood frame here. Look at this. Just massive amounts of bees in this hive. Okay, so let's just focus on looking for the queen or looking for supersedure cells or queen cells, swarm cells. Oh, looks good. I think probably this next frame would be the last brood frame, and then they're going to start getting into honey frames again. So, we'll have a good look at this one and the next one from inside. And then we'll go into the bottom brood box, and that'll be it for this inspection because it's getting kind of long. And the bees won't be happy forever. They're not behaving too badly right now, and this hive generally is pretty good. Wow, another beautiful frame of brood. Uh, some honey, some drone comb. I haven't seen eggs on this in this brood box yet because it's all either hatched out or capped brood, like what you're looking at here. Beautiful though, eh? You can see some pollen and some larva. I'm looking for the queen. Don't see her. Okay, let's get this back in there. Lots of big drones you can see. Take a look at this. This next frame is brewed as well, so I'm going to take a quick look at it. And then that's it for this upper box. Even pushing the frames together, you got to do, do it kind of gently. And hope that you're not squishing any bees. And give them a little time to get out of the way too, that never hurts. Okay, last frame that I'll have you look at, and then I'll have you join me again when I get into the bottom brood box. I don't want this video to go too long on you. Come on, get out of the way. These bees just don't want to get out of the way. It's like they don't read the rule. Or something like that. You, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Okay. Let's see. Okay, another beautiful brood frame. And look, you can see something like a drone. I think it's a drone emerging right now. Look at that. See it trying to get out there? Come on, get out. Or is someone going in? No, it's someone going in. That's very interesting. Another beautiful frame of brood and honey and some larva. Some pollen in there. And again, no swarm cells to be seen. So that's a great sign. Okay, I know, I know. Just let me get mad here. I'll get you back. Okay, let's get this one back and we'll close up the hive now. You'll join me in the bottom brood box, okay? Okay, I know what you're thinking. You're looking at this bottom brood box and you're thinking, these bees are getting ready to swarm. And I'm thinking that too. There's a lot of bees in here. So, I think in the next week or so, I will take some uh, some positive action and maybe split this hive. I could probably split this hive twice and not have too negative an effect on honey production. But again, I'm, I'm very much a novice at this and I've never split a hive. So uh, all of your suggestions are very well received. Um, I've got an idea of how I want to do it, but also within a couple weeks, I'm due to receive two more nukes. So now the nukes I'm probably going to move to different locations, but it does somewhat complicate my plan because I think I have the ability to have four new hives, so I could do one or two splits. 
and one or two newts. Wow, and this is a really interesting frame here. It's all drone comb in the middle. And this one is a lot of drone comb as well. Let's take a look at this. That's never a pretty frame to see. Don't know why it's so drony, but we'll keep looking through the hive and see what we see. This is another frame that looks very similar. Lots of odd looking drone cone. I'd say that smoke is going to drive these bees down, but there's really nowhere for them to go. This hive is jam packed with bees. So, anyway, we'll see what we can do. I really like these plastic frames. I find them always hard to print. Okay, so here's a more sensible brood pattern here. Look at this one. It's got your very typical circular brood pattern in the middle, surrounded by honey, some pollen as well. And again, looking for signs of uh, Swarm cells, and I don't see any, so that's good. Okay, let's try and keep this inspection moving because they're starting to get a wee bit agitated. Okay, well, I'm going to check a couple more frames and then I'm going to start closing this hive up because there's a lot of bees here. They're starting to get unhappy. And uh, I'm going to add a second honey super to this above the queen excluder. So that's really going to be the most important mission now. I don't see any signs of swarming, but there's a lot of bees in here. And it's pretty much inevitable, right? Let's get these guys not the last here. frame again some good brood no sign of a queen lots of pollen and let's see what we got over here yeah seeing solid with brood so lots of bees no swarm cells yet and definitely a hive that is happy producing bees and honey so I'm just gonna close it up give them another super so that they can continue to do their thing and get out of there here. So we'll make some room for this high, this last frame here. Okay. The last frame is always hard to put in, especially when there's so many bees. I mean, they end up just burbling over the top of the, of the uh, brood box. Not too much you can do about that. Just try and put them in nice and slow so that you roll as few bees as possible. And bees do tend to get out of the way when they feel pressure coming. That wasn't too bad. Okay. The only ones flying today. We'll fly an airplane. Forced approach practices. Okay, let's try and get these bees off this, off the edges of this box, so I won't squish too many when I put the second box on. You can see there's no real other way to do it than to smoke the bejeebus out of them. And hopefully I can put it on diagonal. I'll take off some of this burr cone. 
And yes, I'm not leaving the burr comb. I always get a lot of heat about that, but I don't leave the burr comb. I usually just set it aside and pick it up after the inspection is done. I do render wax, but not often. I've only done it a couple of times. I find that for the amount of wax I get, it's not worth the effort for the most part. Now, even I even had concerns early on about trap bees and the beeswax, and they are trapped, but it's just very temporarily. I put it to the side here, and then I come and get it after the whole inspection's done, and all the bees are, there's no bees in it, they're free, they free themselves. Not too worry. Okay, I'm going to close this up. I'll show you me uh, putting the last brood box on, or the last uh, honey super on, okay? Okay, so I'm about to put the, uh, the queen excluder on. And again, I'm leaving it on because they're going through it no problems and getting up in a honey super. So last year at first they didn't go through, so I took the supers or the uh, queen excluder off. The queen did go up and lay some brood. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a game breaker by any stretch. But if if I just can keep her down, I'd rather keep her down below. So that is the plan. Now, let's see if I can get this on. Without squishing. Maybe something like this. Okay. Minimal squishage there. Get out, get out, guys. Come on. That's a good way to get them out, actually. It's just to shake it around and find their way out. Okay, so I'm going to put on this uh, empty super. Hopefully I can just slide it along and not squish me. Let's see. You guys get out the way. I know I'm using a lot of smoke, but I really just don't know another way. Like, uh, smoke equals moving a bees, and moving a bees means less squishing of bees. So, that's my purpose. Now here, again I'm going with uh, with nine frames. As you can see, they're not drawn out. Some of them have been used before. See? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray these frames really, really quickly with some uh, sugar water because these bees now have to go through this brood box, or sorry, this honey super, to get to the second super that they've already drawn out but have not begun to cap yet. So a little bit of sugar water up here will make it a little more inviting probably. I have done that before and it has worked out really well. Just a few squirts. See they're already on it. And then we'll put the second brood box on and we'll button up this hive and call it a successful inspection. I mean, the, the primary goal of it was to make sure there's no swarming. I saw all but about four frames. And those four frames I can see for supersede cells from underneath. So I will, I did lift them up and have a look underneath. And there were no uh, supersede cells. And these bees are just starting to get nasty here. So I'll button them up, let them continue to produce for me. And thanks for joining me at 4D Honeybee. It'll be honey, it'll be capped honey that I'll be, uh, I'll be harvesting from this hive probably within two or three weeks.